Do you want to make your landscape images really pop, but not sure which tools to use in Luminar Neo to do that? If so, then you're in the right place. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video tutorial, I'll show you how to make the greens come alive in your landscape photos. So if you're ready, let's get started. Where, what is the subject here? Is it the water and the pond leaves? Is it the bridge or is it the trees? So three choices. What is the subject here? Is it the pond leaves or what do you call those? Uh, lily pads? Is it the lily pads? Is it the bridge or is it the trees? Or is it something else? Is it a combination? Bridge, bridge, bridge. Okay, so everybody so far is saying bridge. Okay, does your eye go directly to it? And can we improve it with cropping? Okay, Sheila says bridge, Mickey says combo. Okay, so let's take a look at cropping on this one, okay? So there's a few things. Again, we're gonna look at it upside down. So let me crop it, and then we're gonna look at it upside down. Okay, now, where does your eye go? Where does your eye go? Where is your eye drawn? Let me get me off the screen so you can just see the picture, right? Where does your eye naturally go in this image? She lists a sky at the bottom, okay? So right now the sky's at the bottom. Mickey says the water. Uh, there's too much in front of the bridge. The pond with the lilies. Sky at the bottom. Okay, so the point though is it's not going to the bridge as much as you'd want. Okay, so if the bridge is the actual subject, we need to focus more on that, right? So your eye is going to different places. Okay, so now that we have, oops. Now that we have um, a direction, okay? So the upside down thing helps you figure out, okay, what am I going to do? What do I need to solve, okay? So we said the sky is the problem. Can we just crop it? Let's see. I'm gonna hit Composition AI in Luminar and it's going to come in and give us a suggested crop. And when it does that, I find that the amount of crop is usually pretty good, but I just have to move it around a little bit. And in this case, I'm actually gonna crop a little more. Notice there's also a dead tree over here, right? And do we want to keep that? I'm not sure yet. But I know I want to get rid of this sky, okay? So I'm going to crop in a little bit more to maybe about there, right? And then let's see if we get rid of that dead tree, right? So let's take a look at this crop and see how that feels. Okay, how does that feel now? It feels more like the pond and the bridge, right? Right? Do you agree? The, definitely we've solved the problem with that sky, right? Uh, Trish says she'd like to see the lily pads as the focus. Uh, the rock bump thing is kind of white. Uh, yes, right here. Yeah, so all things that we can solve. This is also really bright. So a lot of this can be solved with a simple vignette, right? Which we haven't done. We haven't done any editing yet. Okay, so let's just do the quick edit. Okay, so we're going to develop raw. And let's just choose landscape. Okay, so camera profile, remember? That's where you will find the camera profile in Luminar. It has to be developed raw, you have to have shot raw, okay? If you shot JPEG, you won't get this option, okay? We're gonna do the same thing. We don't have the shift double click trick, but we do have curves and we do have clipping warnings. So Rob, you need to share the keyboard shortcuts for Luminar. So I'm just tucking the histogram in a little bit by grabbing the edges of this curve, okay? So the curve and the histogram are shown here and it matches here, okay? So the curve is how you can adjust the contrast. And I'm gonna bring the highlights down. So that's gonna bring the highlights down in the water especially, but I'm gonna deal with that another way also, okay? Other than that, the contrast looks good. I think that the color looks good. If anything, I'm gonna warm it up a little bit more, like so. Okay, see how much more yellow that has, big difference. And then play with this slider a little bit as well, because if you go more to the green, um, you start to get 
the trees losing their color. See that? You go too far and you start, the bridge is now green. So I'm going to put this back where it was because it was actually pretty good. So I'm not going to mess with that one too much. Okay. And notice I've not touched saturation and vibrance because when you have proper contrast using these other tools, okay, so I've got some black clipping just like I did in the Lightroom. So where you see these blue um, areas, that means that the blacks are clipping. Okay. I'm not clipping anything on the whites. But just making these adjustments, look at the difference, okay? And I have not touched the saturation slider because when you use the camera profile and increase your blacks correctly, you don't need to touch saturation, okay? So that's develop. Now, if we have issues with chromatic aberration, that's where you'll find it here in Lightroom or in Luminar. Let me zoom in. Uh, let me zoom in even further. Oops. Okay, so we're at 400%. Where is the sky? If we're going to see any chromatic aberration, it's going to appear up here. Maybe a tiny, oh, I can see a tiny bit of purple there. Okay, it's out of focus, but let's just check off chromatic aberration. And sometimes when you pull down the highlights, I'm seeing a little bit there as well, you'll get what's called a fringe. There, can you see that? Okay, watch, watch when I click off defringe. See how it removed that color? Okay, there's a blue color. So when you adjust the sky to be darker and I lowered the highlights, sometimes you get this, this fringe of color appearing. So always make sure you, you double check that and zoom in so that you see it, okay? So we fixed those things. And I think we're pretty good on the rest here. Okay, so now once we've done develop raw, I'm gonna do a vignette. And here's my vignette trick, right? So if you haven't seen this before, darken it, change the feather to zero so you can see the edge. I'm going to make it the size and the shape that I want. And then I'm going to select the subject. So in this case, I want to darken more of the water and keep the bridge is the main subject, okay? So something like that. So that's the area that I want to affect, and I'm going to darken this in the process as well, so possibly even over a little bit. So I'm darkening this little log over here, okay? Then I can just put the feather back up and adjust the amount. So I use that as a trick to get positioning and size, okay? Can you see what that's doing? Again, bringing the focus in to the bridge by adjusting the darkness, okay? So your eye is naturally going to be drawn in because of that darkness, okay? Another one that we can use is um, to get focus on the bridge is enhance the structure and the detail, but we can go the opposite way, okay? And if I want to darken the pond, there's a couple of different ways we can do that. So I'm going to show you a few. I'm going to show you two different ways. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to go structure. So let's do positive structure and a little boost. And if we want to see what that's doing, okay. So this is kind of like clarity in Lightroom. See that? Okay. So boost. But we only want this to happen around the bridge. So I'm just going to use a radial gradient and create a shape. Okay, so keep in mind when you do a gradient like this, okay, wherever it's red is where it's going to apply. So I need to invert it, right? So it's going to apply on the inside of where I'm drawing it. Okay, so I want the texture there, okay? And while I'm here, I'm going to copy this mask, okay? So under mask actions. Okay, then I'm going to close it and open it again. And this time I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to blur. Okay, I'm going to the hundredth degree here, paste in that mask, okay, and then invert it. So now it's blurring the outside part. Okay, so I'm sharpening inside, blurring outside. Okay, and of course I need to scale it back because that's too much. Okay, now if you want to see what I've done, well, let me go back to the vignette here, right? So that's before the, the structure 
It's subtle, but you can see that it's softening the edges, right? While bringing focus into the, the bridge. The next thing I like to do is, is like, you can use a dodge and burn tool if you wanna darken the bits of the pond, or I find it much simpler to use develop, and I'm just gonna bring the highlights down, the contrast down, Okay, so my exposure down, I want to darken these light areas, okay? And I'm just going to mask it in. Well, this time I want it on the bottom part of the image, so I'm just going to use a linear gradient. So this one allows you to drag from the edge, in this case, the bottom. And I'm going to darken all the way up to here. Okay, so it's applying on this bottom. Okay, now you can see what it's doing, right? And now I can just adjust it accordingly. Okay. See what it's doing? So it's really putting that focus away from the lily pad. Okay. Big difference. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to get that tree in there as well? I could go back into that develop tool. We still have the ability to mask it. And I could just say, oh, now I want a brush. And I'm just going to paint it in over that tree as well. And somebody mentioned this rock earlier. So I'm just going to do the rock, the slightly lower opacity. Okay, so I just paint it at 30%. And maybe even this one over here. Okay, so any of these little spots that I want to darken, I can just paint them in real quick. Like so. So there we are before and after. Okay. I feel like it's a little bit crooked still. I feel like the bridge is tilting. There, that's better. <clears throat> Make sure that your verticals are straight. Okay. There we go. So before and after. Okay. So now we've made the bridge stand out. Any questions? Too much foreground. See, the other thing that I thought of as well, David, is to crop this one into more of a panorama. So you're not stuck with the original aspect ratio or the shape that the camera photographed. We could go into freeform and then just make it into more of a panorama. Oops, move it over a little bit. Okay, so too much foreground. When you have a lot of foreground like that, it feels like the subject is really far away, right? Let's try something like that. How's that? Better, David? Good. Somebody sees an upside down tree in the water. Am I missing the upside down tree? Oh, over here. Like here, there's a reflection of this bush. Okay. Now, scenes like this are really pretty. And look at the, the greens. Remember, I, I said I'm going to show you another way to darken the pond. I'm going to do that. But because there's lots of green in here, um, there's a couple of tools you can use to get some variations in the greens. So we could go to the color tool and go down to HSL and luminance. So luminance is brightness. And then play with the yellow and the green because you'll see what happens. There's lots of green in here, but there's also lots of yellow in here. Okay. So I'm going to brighten the yellow while simultaneously darkening the green. Okay, can you see what that's doing? Let me just turn it off. See how it's created a little more contrast <coughs> within the leaves themselves, okay? So that's a little trick I like to use. Or we could brighten the green and darken the yellow, but it doesn't work as well. Generally, I use yellow brighter, green darker, okay? Like so. We could see if there's any orange in there. Oh, yeah, see, look at there's some orange in that bush. Okay. We can also shift the color by going to hue. So if you want this to turn into more of a fall scene, look what happens. We can literally make it fall. How crazy is that? Okay, so I'm shifting the hue of the yellows and the greens. Okay, I might actually shift it a little bit like that. I kind of like the yellows being a bit orange. How about that? Okay, so see the difference here that this color tool is making? 
we're just creating some variations of tones within the trees. So it's not all just the same green, okay? The other tool that you can use to do that is Color Harmony. I have it in my favorites, but normally you'll find it down here under Professional. Okay, so Color Harmony and this first one, Color Contrast. Well, I guess it's the second one. Okay, so drag the amount up. I usually just bring it up to about 30. And then as you change the hue slider, it's going to affect different parts of the image. Okay, so wherever your slider lands, it's going to increase the contrast and brighten that, that color and darken the opposite. So in this case, yellow green, right? So see how that's working? So similar to what we did with the other tool, you can do here as well. Be really careful with this one because you can create what I call, of course, neon puke, right? So we need to avoid the neon puke. And yes, we're working on some t-shirts for that, okay? The other tool, there's another tool that you can use to enhance landscape images. Go figure the landscape tool, right? <laughs> landscape tool, okay? The landscape tool has basically these two sliders that are really advantageous for landscapes, foliage enhancer. I actually prefer using the other two tools that I just used because you have a bit more control with them. Foliage enhancer goes crazy, right? And especially if you go too far, and it makes the greens kind of really bluish neon. And I, and I, you know, I don't, I'm not a fan. I always, always, always drag this one to minus 30 to 32 because the greens are just too blue otherwise, right? So be very, very subtle on this one. I almost never go past about 10 if I'm using this one, right? And then the golden hour gives you more yellow as well. But once again, you can't really control the tint of it. Um, or the amount of saturation. So I tend to use color tool and the color contrast, okay? But let's see where we're at, okay? Before and after. Can you see the difference in the leaves now? Really punches, right? And the final way I'm gonna show you how to darken the pond, and it's not the dodge and burn tool, <coughs> it's using a layer. So we wanna duplicate the layer, and you can do that by right-clicking on it, or literally just press D on your keyboard and it makes a duplicate layer, okay, exactly the same with all the same edits, okay? So that's the neat thing. So you can actually change the edits, okay? But if you change the blend mode to multiply, it darkens everything, okay? So it's adding the density from one layer to the other layer. So then you can dial it down in terms of opacity Right, so look at the punchiness it's adding. Okay, so we're getting some real punchiness here. And then of course, you can mask it. Okay, so if I don't want it on the middle, I can once again make a radial gradient in the middle. Oops, I keep grabbing the wrong thing. Okay, so now it's going to affect the outer part of the image, not the inner part, remember, so that's what we want, okay? So now look what it's doing. So it's literally an edge vignette. Right? But instead of toning it in a way that looks fake, I love this duplicate layer, multiply blend mode for darkening and doing sort of a custom vignette. So there's our before and after. I might be inclined to come in and do a bit of a racing. Um, and I would do that on the bottom layer before I duplicated just to clone out some of these little spots and I might do some work on the, the log to tone it down even more. So as Rob has said, please give us a thumbs up on this video if you're watching and you're getting some value out of this today. And remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and share this, share the video with everybody you know that likes photography. They can help them learn to do their landscape editing as well and come join us next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want more step-by-step -step instructions to learn the software, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course. You'll find a link to it in the pinned comment below. Click either of the videos on the screen now to watch more photo editing tutorials using Luminar Neo, Lightroom, and Photoshop.